People say, oh, you're successful, oh, you're famous, you're rich, you have money, no, that's not success. Do you go to, do you work? Do you love your job? Do you, are you happy with what you do? And do you feel that you reached your full potential? That's really what success to me is all about. You know, and um, I grew up poor. I didn't grow up, I didn't have no money at all. I lived in a trailer and stuff, so, you know, I can relate to that. That's why I relate to people that I stand here and say, I'm just like you all, I'm not different. We all go through emotions, our ups and our downs, and I'm the same way. You know, so it's uh, that's why I think people can relate easier to me and the character. That's awesome, man. Look at all these people you make happy, man. That's I know. It's, I love yeah. it's great, man. So you want to take some questions? Yeah, we'll, we'll do some questions. Uh, the guy in the red raises his hand, so we're gonna we're gonna take your question. Yeah, here's the problem. I'm talking to the real Saban with the real franchise about doing something. That's a fan page. I can't miss with the franchise. It's not, you know, approved by Saban. And to be honest with you, I'm working out doing like a Dark Green Ranger movie with Saban Entertainment. Who, it's a billion dollar company and Haim is the maker behind it. And I can't miss with something that's not franchise approved. And um, I love Dominic. I think he does great work. It's just he'll never get the rights for it. And it's just for me, I want to pour my energy into something that could be worldwide to reach people instead of feeling like I'm going to be sued every which way I go. You know what I mean? So that's the only thing with that movie. Okay, uh, yeah, green. Yeah, green. you green. No, right here, yeah, dude, yeah. You're, you're pandering, it's great. Oh, he's the Green Lantern, isn't he? All right, never mind, sit down. Oh, man. Just kidding, I'm just kidding. Hey, dude, it's green. You know I love that green, green, green. All right. Man. Are you going to fight Ryan Reynolds later? <laughs> green, green, yes. I, dude, it's funny you say that because I've never been to Japan. I want to go. I've been everywhere, you know, except Japan. And the reason why I want to go is um, I like to see the martial arts dojos. And then, you know, I, I, can, I can get a concert seat and I'll be the tallest person anyway, so I can just see anywhere I want. I just be like, yeah, man, I got back to go anyway. Um, that was a joke. But uh, I'd like to go to Japan. You know, but I haven't been there yet. But I would like to go, and no one's telling me, is the old Green Ranger from the series alive? The, 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 the old school, huh? Ah, uh, he passed away? Darn. Darn, all right. Man, uh, he laughs. So when you were, so when you were, like, so when you got this role, you're 19 years old, they, did they show you just a lot of this Japanese footage? Dude, we didn't understand it. I'm gonna tell you, my brother, I love him to death, played on Zio. He was David Chuhart. And, uh, you know, for about 10, 11 years ago, he passed away. But he was a, we were super close. And, you know, if you have a brother and sister, no matter if you're fighting, reach out. Let them know you love them. You know, uh, it's important. But um, uh, so he, we were watching the show. I put the video. Nobody knew what Power Rangers was. That, that, it was called Phantoms in the beginning. So when I read the script, I thought I was going in for the Green Ranger. I was like, I don't care. I'll be a Forest Ranger, whatever you want. I don't know what the script is. You know, I thought I'd be like a Forest Ranger. Like, Mighty Morphin yeah. Forest Rangers. Yeah. And then like, hey, Smokey the Bear, don't light things on fire, you know? Uh, but uh, Magic Wand, make my forest grow. Yeah, so basically the word Zordon was very weird. You know, it was like I didn't know what it was and stuff like that. Um, but... Uh, Oh, what was the question to <laughs> no, the, the, when you watch the when you watch oh, yeah, so I showed my brother time. I put the VHS in and he was just sitting there and uh, we showed it the pilot and then the Zords and and then it ended you know like the credits rolled and then the screen went black and I was waiting for his response and he was like dude that's dumb dude I, I, just, I just don't understand it it's so cheesy but when he mentioned the word cheese I'm smart because kids like cheese sandwiches, cheese sticks, <laughs> macaroni and cheese. I went to every agency in Hollywood and they turned me down and said the show's going to be nothing. Don't even do it. It's not going to air. I'm like, yeah, it is 40 episodes. You see Heim shopped it everywhere and nobody bought the show for years. Except one person, Margaret Loesch, who gave him a chance to do 40 episodes. And then Saban didn't have that much money, ended up buying the whole Fox network. You know, so... Um, and then Margaret Loesch was fired. But that's a different story. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so, uh, but yeah, it was awesome. And nobody thought it was going to be as big as it was. And 
um, again, I was just passionate about what I did. I didn't care. I was like, I'll do it for free. I don't. I just love acting. And when Megaforce came up, I don't, you don't even need to talk about a deal. I'm just gonna do it for my fans. I'll get back in spandex. I don't really care. I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> so that's that was the whole. <laughs> so, and, and my little girl loved it. She, you know, Jenna, stand up, Jenna. We're about to do an episode of Doll Talk. Say hi to everybody. Come up here, Jenna. Stay right here so they can see. Hurry. You stay up. They're looking for you. All right, never mind. She's shy. We're about to do doll talk with uh, She's the one with the Green Ranger helmet right in front. Hold the helmet up so they can see. Yeah, right there. Front, 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 front. Anyway, um, so we do, you know, she, she, we do an, um, a show, doll talk, that we'll be having Dave on the show. It's just a silly doll talking show. Might have to, like, stay up late at night. Man. I'm like, whoa, doll talk. Anyway, um, but yeah, no, it was, it was uh, definitely pretty cool. All the way in the back. Dino Thun, dude, I'm, uh, I'm excited to see, I think one of the cons next year, they have a few, Kevin and um, Jeff's booked, who was the Blue Ranger and the White Ranger, I'm excited to see them. But uh, Dino Thunder was cool, you know, because the coolest thing for me is I just wanted someone to say, is there a doctor in the house? And they'd be like, yeah, that's me, like, boom, 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 I'd be like, sorry, I'm not a doctor, but I did play one on TV. <laughs> awesome. Was there any pressure, like, when you became a Red Ranger after being, like... Because before you got to do your own thing, and then you had, then you became, like, a part of it. Like, when I, when I was watching, I was like, did Tommy sell out? Is he, is he the man now? Yeah. Is he the establishment? Yeah, <laughs> what's, that, it, what's it like? To believe it or not, man, like, uh, for me, it was, it, you know, the, the leader just slowly came onto the show. I was really happy just being on my own and being in my own little la-la land as Tommy the Green Ranger. But uh, the leader just slowly kind of... Uh, you know, became the leader and stuff like that. So th there wasn't no pressure. There was a feeling of I'm naked because I don't have a vest on, you know what I mean? And then the Gold Ranger came, I was like, oh snap, I want that vest, you know? But anyway, yeah, the vest was, I always admit like you guys are fighting in the Arctic and everyone else is shivering. You're like, what's the problem? I don't yeah, get it. Yeah. <laughs> this vest is so warm. Did I ever share the vest with the Blue Ranger though? Because that toy, I think the Blue Ranger did have the vest, no? No, just, just the Black he did? Ranger. Just a toy, just merchandising so like they don't think people know. <laughs> you know, the power, uh, San Diego Comic Con, I'll be there to promote um, Saban. I won't be signing. They did ask me to sign, and I told them I'll sign for free for two hours. So wherever I'm going to be, um, that was part of the deal. But uh, they have those exclusive Green Ranger morphers coming out of San Diego Comic Con. The problem is, before you woo, there's only a thousand of them made. And it's only at San Diego Comic Con, which kind of stinks because everybody's like, oh, that stinks, you know? Um, the good news is, and the bad news is it's only at Com San Diego Comic-Con. The good news, I did switch to Geico, I'm not no lie, and I did save a lot of money on my insurance. Uh, that, and then I'll probably get like 10 of them. I'm gonna try. And then on Facebook, the J. Stan Frank official fan page, I'm gonna try to do some contests to try to let someone win it, you know, because it's only San Diego. You had a dragon's order, you have, you, yeah. You've gotta be with the insurance company that has a lizard as a mascot. That makes total sense. Yeah, they did, uh, well, I, I did go to Geico because the lizard was green and I was like, yo, man, this look, this is your father right here, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, oh, welcome to Geico, Dad, you left me. You left me. <laughs> All right, uh, in the front, yeah. Yeah, I'm a seventh degree, thanks for asking. I'm a seventh degree black belt, I've been in martial arts forever. I just went to Thailand. My wife fought in Thailand, and then I got my Arjan, which means master under the Thailand government. So I continue to train and all that. I was already a young master when I started the show. So I was a real karate guy, I had two karate schools. Um, I already had a connection to kids, because I was like Sente Jason at the school. So I already had like, you know, 100 kids looking up to me. It just changed from 100 to like millions and millions, but I do love, working with the kids and connecting with them and you know so I'm a seventh degree black belt in training of course when I started training I was four uh, and I just love it I mean you guys love cons I love karate and you know I'm actually learning so much more about Power Rangers in the last three years of touring than I've ever had so uh, it is pretty cool you know what was the what was the weirdest thing that you learned um, I want to say the weirdest I mean just just the different like morphing sequences and the monsters and then I had to think, like, which was the weirdest monster, and I, I'd say it was the faucet monster, because me and Johnny Bosch on set used to be like, dude, did you see the Japanese footage? I'd be like, no, because we're filming so many of them. He's like, the dude just pees on everybody. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> faucet! We're like, whoa! You know? 
And um, that episode was crazy. So I learned a lot of, I guess I thought about a lot of things, you know? I, I used to love the Lord Zed episodes because he would just like turn like lipstick into a monster. He would do like anything, like you hate books? Here's a book monster. Oh no, it's the evils of literacy. <laughs> Power Rangers. Yeah. yeah. No, the vision in my head is behind the scenes with monsters, all right? Everybody, they wear the monster suits. Everything's like in big rubber things. And um, if the camera was like down here, you know, they would wear the, the Megazord boot or whatever, you know, the star, but whatever, the stomping boots or whatever, like Monster Grow. And then we'd be way over in the field. And then, like, of course, we got some guy just randomly eating a sandwich, you know, and then they're like, move to the left. And then, and it's like, whoa. And it looks like we're being stepped on, you know, and the guy's eating, move to the right. So I didn't really understand all this until I saw the stuff. He's one of, you don't know the, the latest Power Ranger here? Let's sit here, man. Yeah. By all means. So, say hi. Father Jojo, everybody. Right in my solar This dude is the best Rick Lantern of all time. Gotta give it up to him, right? Like, how many colors was he? He was the Green Ranger, the White Ranger, the... He was never... <laughs> what up? What's up, y'all? Just wanna come by and say what's up. Jason David. We were talking, he was there when we were talking about all the weird shots of how we put things together. And I was talking about, you know, some of the monsters that were like in the rubber suits. Um, and Narby, I think, said it the best at Lexington. The monsters always dressed the suits and then they, they were Japanese stuntmen, so they smoked a lot. So they take the suits off and the suits would hang like this. And then they're behind the monster, like smoking. And kids would come to set and the monster's like, oh, you know, they're like, hey. So we had to never take our. Well, we took our helmets off, but sometimes when we were seen to dress, we weren't allowed to be seen to dress, you know? Because um, Walter didn't want to unleash his Mastodon in front of people. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, awesome. I'll see you guys later, man. All right, thank you. And I was wondering who came behind me. I'm like, what? Um, so anyway, with some of the filming and stuff like that, we'd have, you know, the monster boots step in. So I learned a lot about, I think, shooting and movies and stuff like that. And then you cut it together and it looks good. You know, so if any filmmakers out there we have, filmmakers, writers, artists, costume designers, anybody that likes uh, Hollywood making movies and everything else. Anybody watch TV? Anybody play video games? Anyone's not here today? Very good, thank you. Yeah, there's no Amish people in the audience. <laughs> I always, I always loved too on the show that you guys had secret identities, but you wore the exact same color clothes as the Rangers that you were all the time. <laughs> we were just like, who are the Power Rangers? Those six kids in the color coordinated outfits that look like a human rainbow. I think that's. <laughs> well, I think the silliest thing they did, which they didn't show it, is on the movie, we we're filming the Mighty Morphin Power Ranger movie, they took our visors out and our mouthpiece out. All right? So you understand, we wear the suits. And the only reason we put them on is because they removed the visors in the mouth. So they, we had to put them on because they saw. But it was stupid because we'd stand up there and be like, Jenna, you put the helmet up here. Come up here, put the helmet. Jenna Frank, everyone. <laughs> hey, you gonna drop the helmet like you did in Dallas? <laughs> she opened the car door and was like, boom. I was like, no. I mean, she fell on the floor and everything. I was like, watch out, my helmet. Um, now we know why she's shy. <laughs> so we would, we would film, and our visors and our mouthpiece would be out, and we'd stand there, and like Dave and everybody would be like, dude, you look so stupid. And he'd be like, shut up, you look stupid too. Hey, can you recognize me? Uh, no, dude, your secret identity. Okay. So, um, but it was pretty, yeah, it was, I don't know, we didn't have parents. You know, we just ran around Angel Grove, man, and did whatever we wanted to do, you know? Yeah, you never saw their parents. <laughs> no, because we would pretend we would sleep. We'd be like, all right, good night, Mom, good night, Dad. They'd just be a bit, and be like, suckers, woo! <laughs> Teleport right from bed, you know? Was it fun working with Bulk and Skull? Those were my favorites. Dude, they're so awesome, man. If you get a chance to meet them, and they're like that in, in real life. You know, and Jason Narby is a really good friend of mine. Um, you know, so let me see if I can call him and see if I can get him on the phone. Um, yeah, let me see. Uh, 
hope we answer. I hope that his ringtone is just da 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 da. But anyway, they're really cool to work with, and um, it's uh, their characters when they film. They're just like you know they film and then they're like cut and then they become like the same people you know and um, so uh, anyway they're really awesome. Let me see if uh, Garvey will pick up the phone and uh, call. But yeah, go ahead with the other question when he picks up. Well, let's get another question then. Uh, one second. Speaker, and they were and sorry to catch you off guard there. First of all, congratulations on your baby. Yeah. <laughs> so I got you on I got you on speaker there, and uh, I was telling them that uh, that uh, you were really cool to work with, and you're one of my good friends. And I just I don't know I thought I'd call you up to uh, see why you're not here in Miami. You gotta oh, get here. I see. In Hawaii, people. Jason, Dave, and Frank, and I had a falling out. I Thank you, buddy. Listen, I, I do have a question for you. Uh, how, how did it feel when your baby was born? Because, like, I know that was an awesome feeling for me. How, how did you feel? And I know this is off the power of the subject, but uh, how did that feel? Oh, sure. Dude, I, it, it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming to have this complete stranger suddenly become the most important person in your life. And then when they put that baby in your hand, talk about the weight of the world suddenly coming in. Uh, it, it, it's amazing. I mean, there, there really is no describing their brain. I mean, yeah, it, it, it really is overpowering. I can't, I, I can't put it into words. Well, awesome, man. Listen, I, I, uh, Narvi, I do want to get you on some of the shows I do because I think we do awesome panels. We have a lot of memories of me, you, and Johnny, and everyone going doing crazy things, and you waking up and uh, driving to uh, uh, where did you drive to get pancakes? Tombstone or where was it? Oh, well, I didn't even get pancakes. I go down to Arizona. That was I go such down a fun. Just outside of Tombstone, there's a place where I get pancakes called. I don't think it actually had a name. It just had a giant sign that said. <laughs> well, that's awesome, man. You're a crazy guy like that. I'd like to get you to some of the conventions I do. I have a, a ton of them, and I'd love for you to be here. But um, don't worry, man. I'll take care of you. I'll, 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 uh, I'll get you some good shows, and the fans want to see you, right, guys? <laughs> Narvi, for the people, for the people that want to get in touch with you, or maybe Facebook you now and like his page while we're sitting in the audience, since you were so nice to come on the phone. What's your Facebook page? Well, I'm sure as we speak, maybe a few people will definitely like your page, man. But I want to thank you for taking the call, and I'll talk to you a little, little bit later about what we got going on. And I haven't forgot about you with the aftermath stuff. But uh, we love you, we miss you, and one more time to laugh if you don't mind. <laughs> of course, I'll do my evil good ranger laugh. <laughs> uh, Army, I'll text you a little bit later, buddy. All right, sorry to catch you off guard, and. You know, I, I uh, hope you're not naked. No, uh, actually, I was putting my pants off when you called me. You know, baby, you definitely at night. So suddenly out of bed, half naked, trying to pull out a coffee. And suddenly like, today's for free? Oh my God, I hope I don't come to be thoughtful or anything like that. So hey, well, well done, well played. Uh, <laughs> all right, well, send your family love, man. And um, congratulations on the baby. We'll talk soon, okay, buddy?
Say bye, everybody. Say bye to Norman. Bye. Let's make another question. Ask a question, get an answer, everybody. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Favorite episode, uh, I would say uh, Fighting Spirit, because I was in the hospital and, and that was like the easiest act and I could just be like. <laughs> and they're like, cut. <laughs> oh, oh, so also with the Rangers, I don't know why Turbo wasn't in there, which, you know, I'm not too sad about it, but, um, and then it was just funny that the guys were all different levels, right? Like the stunt guys were all, <laughs> can we just make them all one size, please? But uh, Fighting Spirit probably. Okay, um, yeah. Of course, I got a lot of props. In fact, when I went back to, I talk about the Green Ranger and the Green Ranger suit, and, you know, I got other stuff. And, you know, not that I stole it or anything like that. It's just, you know, it was, it was my dragon dagger, you know what I mean? And uh, so when I filmed, they're like, well, do you have any props? And I was like, no. Well, uh, so they're like, dude, we're not going to take them away from you. We just need some stuff because it's been 20 years and all that. And I was like, all right, I guess I'll bring some stuff. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I do have stuff. And most of them's hanging at my schools, Rising Sun Karate schools. I have three in Houston. So if you're ever in the Houston area, we have a couple shows, the Space City Con coming up. And if you're ever there, just take a trip. You can always come by, take a look at the studio. I have tons of memorabilia stuff. I can't even keep the kids focused straight without, ah, woo, ah, ah, especially the ADD kids. Woo, woo. And I'm around two. I got ADD too. I'm like, what are we talking about? <laughs> All right, let's take another one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, that's really hard. It's, it's hard to, I don't watch the TV as, um, as well, that's me. I, I kind of watch it as a second person, you know? And here's my wife, Tammy, over here. Say hello. Hey, do some karate moves. They want to see when you uh, fought in Thailand. What did you do? I mean, do you, did you tell them that I just usually wear my helmet around the house and chase you and stuff, or no? You didn't tell them? <laughs> All right, all right. Nunchucks! Nunchucks! Yeah! It's morning time! Make it grow! All right, so, uh... So... What was the question? What was it for real? Oh, the movie, yeah. So filming the movie was different because it was an $80 million budget. And uh, it was huge. There's so much money that they waste on the show. Because it's like, hey, can you fix my shoe? I'm sorry, I'm not in the shoe department. Dude, seriously, just fix my shoe. Can you, I'm sorry, that's the wardrobe's department. Can you fix my hair? I'm sorry, we have hair people. Okay, hey, can you wipe? I'm sorry, that's the makeup department. Soup, it's a union movie, so everybody was such a waste. We filmed two months with Mariska, who I, I think that uh, Mariska, right? The Delcia, and then we got rid of her two months later, and then we hired the old Delcia back. So just a lot of money to waste, but uh, it is two things that I think is funny. Um, when I went back to, when I went back to uh, Megaforce to film, I guess my wife says, oh my gosh, you sound so much like Tommy. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I guess my voice drops a little bit when I'm like, come on, buddy, take my hand. It's okay. We're here to help you, you know? And she's like, you sound like Tommy. I guess I have a Tommy voice or whatever. And the second thing is, when you ever stepped on something or stubbed your toe and you want, ah, shit, you know what I mean? And uh, walk around the house. You don't know what it feels like to step on yourself because I walk and I'm just ah oh, stupid toy and it's like me like you know <laughs> Jenna leaving your toys laying around. Oh, and it's like so have you ever stepped with you on yourself or uh, played you played with yourself the toy? <laughs> <laughs> was it was it? Like, I always noticed like when you just went ah oh, like reminded me of every time you threw a punch on a show. What what is what is the purpose behind that to go ah oh, you know? Okay, listen. This is a very good point, and I'm glad you mentioned it. It's called a ki-ai, which means that a ki and I'm gonna have a karate class Sunday, so I'm not gonna kill everybody, but I'd love you to participate, take your first step in a black belt excellence. A ki comes from the bottom of your stomach. It helps tighten up your stomach, so when you're fighting, it's like your stomach's always tight. Even like this, I talk this way, I don't, hey, you ever came around and someone poked you, you're like, dude, that knocked the wind out of you? I always, no matter when I'm talking, it's like if someone hits me, my stomach's tight. It's called a ki-ai. It comes from the bottom of your stomach, and it comes from the bottom of your stomach, and not your lungs. So the ki are like, from here, as a warrior, because it's an imaginary fight between two or more opponents. 
Now, the key eyes I can't stand are what's going on now and what went on then. Yeah! Oh, yeah! Hoo, hoo. Uh, when people train with me, that's a no-no. We don't want to do, you know, ah! scares me, all right? Put your teeth together from the bottom of your stomach. It looks like a warrior when you throw a punch, it's like, ah! from the bottom of your stomach. It's called a key eye. So that was the purpose behind it.